Neil Cavuto invited UAW President Sean Fain on his program yesterday. This was after Sean Fain at a meeting of the UAW said we endorse Joe Biden. Joe Biden spoke. And if you think about political endorsements, it's hard to, to think of a more obvious endorsement when you look at Trump's anti union views. And when you consider Joe Biden getting out there on the picket line, supporting striking workers, the most pro union worker, uh, pro union president I can ever remember, didn't stop Neil Cavuto from saying, listen, you could have endorsed Trump. Why didn't you? And Sean Fain did not hold back. Could have considered Donald Trump. You did not. Why not? Uh, well, I mean, you know, if you look at just the, the facts and the, the body of work of, of both candidates and, you know, uh, both of them in their own words, uh, nowhere in history has Donald Trump ever stood for the American worker. Um, he stands against pretty much everything that we stand for. So it's that simple. I mean, listen, uh, you you don't even need to have a deep conversation. You just pull quotes of things Trump has said about unions and the stunts he's pulled. And then you pull quotes and you pull actions from Joe Biden about unions. How is it even a choice? And of course, the framing of this entire interview is the biased unions who support Democrats. Well, listen, it's the Democrats who are in, uh, uh, disproportionately supporting the rights of workers to bargain collectively. It is Republicans who are against that. Why on earth would a union shoot itself in the foot? What was it? Uh, De Sanctis called it uh, ballistic podiatry. Why would they do that when it's obvious the way the cake is iced? Here's one more clip. And Sean Fain goes through the list of of, of Trump standing against workers. So, uh, we uh, had to look at a lot of things. And overall, you know, we just had our, our contract fight uh, with the big three and uh, our, our most successful contract in history. And, uh, you know, uh, President Biden was standing, stood there with us on the picket line, you know, unlike President Trump back in 19 when GM was on strike for 40 days and he was completely non-existent um, and silent on the issue. Um, you know, I can go down through the list of things, uh, the difference in the candidates, but uh, it's very clear to us uh, who stands with working class people in this country and who uh, stands against them. You know, um, your counterpart of the Teamster, Sean O'Brien, has met with uh, Donald Trump and, of course, the president, all the major candidates when they were still in the race. You opted not to go that route. Uh, and I'm just curious as to why. Well, you look at the body of work. Um, you know, I'm not going to speak for President O'Brien, but I will speak for the UAW. And sure. uh, in 2008, 2009, the economic recession, Donald Trump blamed the workers for what was wrong with these companies. You know, in 2015, he talked about doing a rotation of good paying jobs in the Midwest, somewhere where they pay less and have people begging for their jobs back at lower wages. Yep. You know, in 19, uh, well, also in 15, uh, when Volkswagen workers voted to organize, um, he put an LRB in place that uh, killed the organizing drive, that killed the organizing uh, the contract for those workers. Um, you know, in, in 19, when he was president, he didn't support the strike. He told workers at Lordstown. Neil Cavuto, by the way, increasingly uncomfortable with this list. Assembly plant, which was closing, don't sell your houses. And then he did nothing to support them, you know, versus versus President Biden, who in 2023, when a plant was going to close in Belvedere, Illinois for Stellantis, he stood with those workers. He helped us save a community and helped bring not one plant, but two plants back to life. And he stood with our members on the picket line in our fight for economic justice. The difference couldn't be more stark. And it's almost surprising that Neil Cavuto, you know, I, I would more expect that Fox News and similar media would just say unions are terrible, not why are the unions biased towards Biden? Why didn't they endorse Trump? I would expect because it's just par for the course that Trump attacks unions and hates organized labor. I would expect them to just attack the very institution of organized labor. So an important endorsement for Joe Biden endorsements in general are not the most important thing at this point in time. A relatively small percentage of the workforce in the United States is even union uh, labor. But all of that being said, yet another data point in which, you know, it's gotten popular to say, well, Biden's wealthy, too. He's got eleven million dollars or whatever it is that he's worth. Trump is not only dramatically wealthier, which is not a pro or a con. But if your argument is that wealthy people are disconnected from labor, 
by definition, Trump must be way more disconnected. Even I mean, listen, I know he's not as rich as he claims to be, but I think he's probably a billionaire, if not close to it, if we're if we're honest. If that is a factor, Trump's even more disconnected from labor. But more importantly, just look at the track record. Look at the track record of how Trump has dealt with organized labor as a business person for decades and look at how Joe Biden has dealt with organized labor through his decades in public office. And who else are the te uh, Teamsters or UAW or whoever? It's abundantly clear that Biden's their guy. Let's take a break. We have so much more coming up today. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the David Pakman show.